My name is Kate Bowman and I'm a resident OB-GYN physician at Kaiser Los Angeles Medical Center. I will be presenting our research entitled Clinically Useful Findings of the 11 to 14 Week Obstetric Ultrasound Other Than Nuchal Translucency. The nuchal translucency, or NT, is a collection of fluid that is seen under the skin behind the fetal neck measured on ultrasound in the first trimester. This is measured on ultrasound roughly between 11 to 14 weeks when the fetal crown lump length is between 38 to 45 millimeters and 84 millimeters. An enlarged NT of greater than 3 millimeters is associated with an increased risk of fetal aneuploidy, such as trisomy 21. In fact, the NT measurement on ultrasound alone has a detection rate of 64 to 70% for Down syndrome. When the NT measurement is combined with the first trimester serum screening, the detection rate improves to 82 to 87%. However, with the advent of cell-free DNA screening, the detection rate of Down syndrome has improved to 99%. Since cell-free DNA is a superior screening method than NT for trisomy 21, and its use has been expanding to other genetic conditions, why are we still performing NT ultrasounds? We wanted to address the question, as the technology of cell-free DNA testing evolves, what is the value in continuing to offer routine first trimester ultrasound between 11 to 14 weeks? The objective of our study was to describe sonographic findings identified at 11 to 14 weeks gestation aside from the NT. This includes confirmation of gestational dating, identification of multiple gestation and chorionicity, fetal demise, and anomalies of the placenta, umbilical cord, and maternal anatomy. We prospectively collected data of all NT ultrasounds performed over a one-year period from November 2017 to November 2018 at two Kaiser Medical Centers, Los Angeles and West Los Angeles. A total of 3,953 patients were included in our study with no exclusion criteria. Demographic data was collected on all patients and further chart review was performed to evaluate if cell-free DNA screening was performed on these patients. We performed a descriptive study and noted the following ultrasound findings based on sonographer reports. The presence of dating discrepancy or redating, confirmation of chorionicity and multiple gestation pregnancy or identification of undiagnosed multiples, fetal demise, major and minor fetal anomalies, abnormal findings of the placenta or umbilical cord, and abnormal findings of maternal uterus, cervix, and a nexum. At our medical centers, either a sonographer or perinatologist performs the NT ultrasound with the following measurements and evaluation performed. A perinatologist then reviews all images. Here we list the demographic information of our patient population. As you can see, the average patient age is 31, the average BMI is 27, and the race categories are as listed below. Out of the nearly 4,000 patients included in our study, 9.8% had ultrasounds with notable findings. Those included 32 elevated NT measurements and 354 other ultrasound findings. Here we summarize the different ultrasound findings by category. 211 or 5% of the ultrasounds had findings related to the fetus. 182 or 4.6 of all ultrasounds had maternal findings. Additionally, there were 15 placental and 10 umbilical cord findings in our study. Here is a summary of the abnormal fetal ultrasound findings. As you can see again, 5.3% of all ultrasounds had related findings. This includes elevated NT measurements, fetal demise, gestational age discrepancy, and evaluation of chorionicity. Fetal anomalies in our study included cystic hygroma, anencephaly, emphalocele, megacystis, large pelvic mass, sacral agenesis, including others. There were additionally three sets of undiagnosed multigestational pregnancies, twins or triplets, identified at the time of NT ultrasound.
percent. 4.6 percent of ultrasound had notable maternal findings, including fibroids or nexal masses. Of note, 1.39 percent of ultrasounds found fibroids that were greater than four centimeters, and one percent of all ultrasounds were noted to have had nexal masses greater than three centimeters. Again, there were an additional 15 placental findings, including 13 subchorionic hemorrhages and 10 cases of single umbilical arteries. Additionally, we specifically looked at patients in our population who received cell-free DNA screening. At our institution, cell-free DNA screening is offered to women who will be advanced maternal age at time of delivery or with personal history of prior pregnancy with aneuploidy. A total of 1,149, or 29% of our patients in our study, had undergone cell-free DNA screening performed as part of the routine genetic screening. Out of the patients who underwent routine cell-free DNA screening, 11.5%, 133 out of the 1,149 patients, had findings on their NT ultrasound. An additional 13 cell-free DNA tests were collected after fetal abnormalities were identified on a NT ultrasound. In discussion, some of the strengths of our study is its large sample size with close to 4,000 patients. While it is well known many fetal anomalies can be seen as early as 11 to 14 weeks on ultrasound, ours is the first study to include the frequency of other beneficial findings such as abnormalities of maternal structures, placenta, and umbilical cord, in addition to diagnosis of fetal demise and multiple gestation. Some of the major limitations of our study is that it is a descriptive observational study. As well, the NT protocol at our institution differs from ISOOG guidelines, which could lead to a possible underdetection of anomalies. In our study, 9.8% of ultrasounds performed during the NT ultrasound at 11 to 14 weeks gestation had unexpected findings. Earlier detection of fetal or maternal abnormalities may have important implications for pregnancy. Out of the patients who underwent routine cell-free DNA screening, 11.5% had findings on NT ultrasound. If NT ultrasounds were not performed in these patients, these early findings would be missed. Routine ultrasound performed during the 11 to 14 weeks should continue to be offered to all pregnant patients as it can provide the following valuable information. Identification of abnormalities of the placenta and umbilical cord, Identification of major and minor fetal anomalies, confirmation or establishment of accurate gestational dating, diagnosis of multiple gestation and establishment of chorionicity, diagnosis of fetal demise, and diagnosis of abnormal maternal structures. Thank you for listening. My name is Kate Bowman. Here's my contact information.